that enables me to do what I'm doing. I'm here because of the support of that particular local church. We're running the school. We're able to come and share the word of the Lord with you on a Thursday, on a Wednesday, every morning, because we have a faithful congregation that mm. makes that possible. So a huge God bless you and a huge thank you to the family at Cornerstone Church. Thank you, Cornerstone Church. Amen. Yes, for allowing the word of the Lord to spread Amen. as wildfire. Glory Absolutely. be to God for that. And for see while we are there, uh, of course, School of the Spirit is uh, the the students are graduating in November. Oh, yes, absolutely. On the fifth day of November, which is a Saturday, is the grand graduation service. So make sure you're part of it. All those precious students that have labored for your national higher certificate, your national diplomas, those of you that have your Bachelor of Theology completed, your three-year program, those of you that are uh, currently doing your master's, mm. all that will culminate in one of the grandest graduation services we are having on uh, in November, November 5 it, it is. So please get ready. We on our side are getting ready with the graduation ceremony that's in November. We also opened up registrations for the 2023 academic program. Yes. So there's a whole lot of things going on at church as we come to the last quarter of the year. In fact, from September to December for Cornerstone, it's going to be, I think, one of the most busiest parts of the year for mm. us. Mm. As the mm. new registrations are pouring in, the graduation is getting ready to go yes. out. Christmas is around the corner. A whole lot. My birthday is next month. <laughs> Good Lord. There's a whole lot of things going on. So we're getting ready for that. Now there's a scripture I want to introduce to you that we read all the time. This is to those of you that sense, you have a sense in your heart. God is calling you to his word. You may have a sense in your heart or a desire in your heart to study the scriptures. Mm. Well, the word of the Lord in 2 Timothy 2.15 declares, Study to show thyself approved, approved. Mm. unto God, right. a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly mm. dividing the word of truth. The scripture opens up there in the 15th verse by saying, Study, study to show thyself approved. Mm. Now take note of this very well-known portion of Scripture. And we may have read it hundreds and hundreds of times. Yes. But many sincere Christians, Malungi, mistakenly read that word study right. to mean read. Mm. Study does not mean read. So everyone reads the Scripture, they understand the Scripture. Yes. But instead of studying, we get up every day. And we read the Holy Bible right. or we read the scriptures. Reading the scriptures is not what God has asked us to do. Right. Reading the scriptures will not yield the same fruit mm. as studying the scriptures. So many times, very sincere Christians, very God-fearing Christians, right. uh, people that love the Lord dearly and love the Holy Scriptures dearly, they eventually end up reading their Bible right and they get caught up in this religious activity of reading mm. when the scripture actually admonishes us to to study. study right so you got people getting up early in the morning and they're reading now reading and studying are two diametrically opposed and different the activities are hugely different yeah Reading will yield one kind of fruit. Studying will yield another kind of fruit. So reading is when you're trying to complete maybe a chapter. Mm. You're reading to trying, trying to complete a particular book. You may be reading through the book of Psalms. Right. You may be reading through the book of Genesis. Or you may be reading through one of the New Testament books. Right. But reading and studying is totally different. Right. You Absolutely. know, this, while you are there, yes, one may not know how to differentiate between studying and reading. Absolutely. Uh, especially our old school. Yeah. Um, you know, those that may have not gone to school. Because when I came into church, my pastor told me, read your Bible every day. Right. Yes. Now we read the newspaper. 
Yes. When you read a magazine, yes. you may read a poem, you may be instructed in your, those of you in school or in university, you may read a book. Yes. Reading a novel and reading the scriptures are different. Mm. You can read the scriptures and nothing can make any sense to you. For mm -hmm. example, you can read uh, Matthew chapter 1. Mm. And Matthew chapter 1 has to do with the genealogy of Jesus. So you can read all through the genealogy of Jesus. Yes. You will accomplish the goal of reading. Mm. So mm. your goal is to read the entire chapter. Mm. Your goal may be to read right through the book of Matthew. You may finish reading the book of Matthew, but never understand anything right. that you read. Right. Reading words is does not edify you. Right. Reading does not build you up. Mm. Reading does not develop you. Therefore, you got Christians yeah. for years and years. Mm. They're reading their Bible. They're reading through books in the Bible. Yes. But they have no understanding, no insight, no revelation, no illumination regarding what they are reading. Right. So ask yourself now, are you a Christian? You may love the Lord dearly. You may be faithfully committed to the Lord. You may be attending church regularly. Are you reading the Bible? Right. Or are you studying the Bible? Mm -hmm. Is your goal to read through multiple books? Or is your goal to study the Word? Right. Now, 2 Timothy encourages us to study. It doesn't encourage us to read. Mm -hmm. In fact, I do not find anywhere in the Scriptures an exhortation to read. God calls us to study. Right. God calls us to meditate. Yes. But he doesn't call us to read. Sure. So the exhortation to read is, is, is not really emphasized in scripture, mm. but God calls you to meditate. Mm. Joshua mm. 1 8. Meditate upon. Now, mm. as you do that, as now how do you study it? What kind of environment? You have to be in some kind of formal academic environment. Right. Paul the Apostle studied God's Word. Mm. Paul went to a school, mm. a specialized Hebrew school that was led by someone called Gamaliel, right. one of the most educated Hebraic Pharisees ever living in the New Covenant days. Right. Paul, in order to understand the Old Covenant, couldn't just read through the Old Covenant. Right. He went to school. Right. He went to an academic environment. He came into the fellowship of like-minded people. Mm. And that's mm. what Cornerstone mm. School of the Spirit provides right. for you. Right. It provides an academic environment. It provides an environment to you that has like-minded people. Imagine you may be in your home or in your family, and you may be the only one with a burning desire, mm. sensing God's call. You may be the only one that wants to study. Mm. But once you come to the school, you're now in a company of like-minded people. Right. You suddenly realize, hey, I'm not the only one feeling mm. like this. They are sensing God's call. He is mm. sensing God. She senses the same thing. So you're in an environment where there's hundreds of people right. that have the same DNA like you, the same mm. urgency for study. Right. That actually sharpens you. Mm. That actually confirms what God's doing and assist you as well in a way. You, you don't feel like weird. Right. You know when I was when I sensed <laughs> God's call in my life, my parents told me not to do it. Okay. My pastor told me not mm. to do it. My uncle was my prof in university. He was my prof. Mm. He told me you're crazy. Don't do that. Mm. Continue your studies in 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 in, in medicine. Mm. So I listening to all this uh, this advice. I felt like I'm doing something wrong mm. until I went to Bible college mm. Yeah, when Pastor Fred was around. Yeah. And when I walked into that, there were 200 students mm. in the day class two, that sensed the same calling, right. had the same passion, and suddenly I was amongst a tribe of people that were pursuing God's call. Mm. And suddenly I said, hey, I'm not mad, I'm sure. not insane. Mm. There are other people God is calling. Mm. So the school firstly provides that environment for you. Mm. Hey, there are other people that sense God's call. Maybe you're sitting there and you and God's calling you to mm. his to the mission field. 
God may be calling you to the ministry. He may be calling you to worship. He may be calling you to a healing ministry. Whatever it is he's calling mm. you to. When you come to the school, you're suddenly going to meet people mm. that are going to share their lives with you. Mm. Mm. Then you have the environment where the word is taught. Right. We're not preaching the scriptures to you. The scriptures are taught. Right. And while you're listening now, you, you may be listening to the show this morning. Yeah. I want you to do something. Once you sense that quickening, mm. I don't know if you sense that in your heart. It's like a, a tug in your heart. Mm. If mm. you ask me how God called me, all I can say is, is it was like something was quickened on the inside mm. of me. Mm. Like, the, like a hook. Right. Inside your heart and the yeah. Lord slowly drew it's like you got caught in a fishing hook. Mm. The Lord fished me out mm. of this of the population of mankind and slowly draws you out mm. and slowly you sense something pulling you in a certain direction. And many a times even your own parents sometimes don't no. even understand. Well, you know, <laughs> my dear mom is now seventy three. Mm. She's seventy three years of age. I think it's only now, wow. at her age, now, mm. at 73, she finally has made peace mm. that God has called her son. I can imagine, because many parents, as we are growing up, all they want to see is that doctor, <laughs> is, is us, you, you know, they want to see we you want our becoming children to a, be a doctor, lawyer, you know, a lawyer, <laughs> a, um, you know, yeah. Don't they, talk about yeah. God is calling you. No way. No, 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 no. So, so, so that was the aspirations for of, of my uh, parent for me. Mm. But I think now my mom suddenly realizes mm. in her old age that, you know what? God called this boy. Mm. And she can now mm. see the fruit of the calling. Mm. But that didn't happen on the first day. Mm. On the first day, she mm. said, man, nobody knows this clown. Mm. No one knew anyone by the name of Mervyn Naidu 30 years ago. No one knew my name. No one knew what I was that God's hand was on me. No one knew that I could preach, speak, or do anything. You know, they saw a brown, uh, thin-looking, scraggy-looking, unknown fellow. I looked like... <laughs> I looked at some photos of myself 30 years ago. I wouldn't even welcome myself to church. <laughs> but then it took all that time for God busy molding you and shaping you and working upon you. You may be in the same place like me. Mm. And there's many young people, I believe, you know, as we get ready for the coming of the Lord. And there's many in the old generation that are passing on. Mm. I'm not going to be here forever. I'm 52. So my generation of people are going to come to an end. Mm. Who is the Lord raising up now? Mm. Right mm. now, as I'm speaking to you, yeah. God is raising up pastors. He's raising up evangelists. Mm. He's raising up prophets. He's raising up people for the ministry of tomorrow. Mm. And he has to do it now. He can't, right. God can't wait for me to die. Mm. He has to do it now. Mm. So while I'm speaking to you, you may be one in a million people God's raising up, mm. God's calling, God's preparing. Mm. You have to get yourself into an environment where you allow God to form you, to mm. fashion you, to shape you, to mold you. And the place he does that is when he brings you to his word. Right. His word yes. is the tool right. that prepares. Mm. His word is a tool that sharpens. Mm. His word is the tool that quickens. Mm. His word prepares your heart. Right. Thank God for Dr. Fred that opened up a Bible school back mm. in the day. Thank God I went there. Right. The school was the environment that prepared my heart for the ministry I'm doing now. Did, then, did you ever think that uh, you also want to I, open a school, I, a Bible school? I, when I went, to, I, I never even think I'll be a pastor. Mm. Never in my, uh, in, in my, I, I, well, it wasn't, uh, pastoral work wasn't something I was pursuing. Mm. I wanted to be on the road. Mm. I wanted to do some uh, evangelistic work, travel around mm. and so on and so on. Well, God has his own plans, you know. Mm. I never thought, never for a moment, I could never, I never saw myself in a suit. Because mm. I never wore a suit in my life. Right. I wore torn jeans. I had long hair flowing down to my shoulders. I had a beard going down to my breast. I looked like a prophet from the wilderness if you saw me. 
So when people, <laughs> people in my past meet me, they can't recognize me. Yeah. Because guys that knew me said, Mervyn, are you really wearing a suit? Are you really wearing a tie? I said, not only do I wear a suit and a tie, I live in a suit and a tie. <laughs> I basically spend bet the better part of my days in a suit. Yes. Serving and God's people. Serving God's people. So I never saw myself like that when I was in Bible school. Wow. I never saw myself like that when I entered Bible school. And you may be one of those people whom God is raising. No matter what the circumstances around you look like. No matter what your family thinks about you. No matter what you think about yourself. God is able to take any vessel that's able, that's willing, that is surrendered. And he will shape them, fashion them, mold them and make them into the vessel he wants to use. And you could be the future of the church being prepared today. Mm. My invitation to you is get to Cornerstone School of the Spirit. Right. Remember, we are in partnership with the University of KwaZulu-Natal, yes. the Department of Religious Studies. You're going to be graduated when you complete your academic programs by that university. And Malungi is there. She witnessed mm. the graduation ceremonies over the years. Mm. It's a huge, huge, yeah. huge celebration. And we want to help you. And remember, no matter what the financial constraints are, Malungi, the school mm. still is absolutely free. free, free Everything, our utility bills mm. have increased. Mm. Uh, the cost of ministry, running the, the, the operation we, we're running currently mm. at Cornerstone has increased in so many different mm. ways. You know, every single thing mm. has gone up. You, uh, and I'm sure everyone is aware of it. In spite of that, at the School of the Spirit, we still have maintained an absolutely free school. That means there's no monthly tuition fees. Right. There's no registry. We don't even co collect a registration fees, mm. which will enable me to raise some money. Right. If I have 300 students mm. registering and I charge them 100 rand, I can raise some funds. Mm. We mm. don't do that. Mm. There's no registration fees. There's no monthly fees. There's no tuition fees. Yeah. Man, there's no fees. Mm. No, absolutely. Mm. You're paying for absolutely nothing. What an opportunity being extended to every single person. Right. Or you may be a housewife, a pensioner, someone retired. You may be a business person. You may be someone that has some spare time during the day, during the afternoons, during the mornings. And you're saying, Pastor, I just want to come and sit and listen to the word. Yes. Then the school of the spirit is open up for you. For you. And that number for this again. All you have to do is do not call, please. Right. Simply WhatsApp 74 841 Five eight eight seven. Do it right now. O seven four eight four one five double eight seven. Send them a WhatsApp. You are inquiring about the School of the Spirit twenty twenty three registrations. Our team will then respond to you and give you an idea of what to do. Twenty twenty three, which uh, the registrations the, are open. As the twenty twenty three registrations are open right now. So wow. we open for registrations. We encourage you to register. It's absolutely free. And again, no registration fees, no monthly fees, no tuition fees, no fees. <laughs> no fees. And there's teas and coffees. And there's teas and coffees provided. <laughs> there's so many things, so much of uh, additional stuff provided. Quality lecturers coming from UK, ZN. There's so much. There's an ordination. Yes. We ordain you. We prepare you for your marriage officer's license. We pre there's so much, Melinda, you know. It's just ridiculous for someone not to come. Mm, definitely, at free of charge. And it's free of charge. Definitely, yeah. Fundis. Thank you so much, Fundisi, for coming in. And uh, just before Fundisi goes, that number again uh, that you can what, send a WhatsApp message to is 074 841 Fundisi, thank you so Absolutely. much. And preparing for graduation, which is taking place on the 5th the graduation of November. Is yes, ma'am. And uh, you did mention that all family members this time. Oh, are oh please. Uh, those of you that are graduating in the pre Previous years we we could not allow that, but this year in 2022 you're more than welcome to bring your family and so on and so on and so on. Amen. Thank Amen. you so much for well, this.
Great to be with you. I hope everything works out here at the station. Lord, we pray and thank you for the new breed of people, this thank Joshua you. generation that you are raising up during these last days. I pray, Lord, that you raise up your ministers, your yes. people, thank the you, soldiers called, the laborers, to labor in the kingdom of God, that you raise them up, that you prepare them. And Lord, we thank you that we are part of that preparation process mm -hmm. at the school to equip them, train them, and deploy them into the harvest field. Bless these people, I pray. Keep your hand upon the station. Keep your hand upon all this equipment that's here, Lord, all this digitized equipment. Keep your hand upon the staff to manage the station in these challenging times. And we give you praise and glory for the great things you're going to do. And the people of God said, Amen, Amen and Amen. And